What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Today I got a little unboxing product review for you. The Vampire Count Skeletons. This is a box that you get 10 skeletons in. I know, only 10 for, um, for a, a good little chunk of change here in the States. But you know what? It's, it's okay because um, the new VC range is coming out in January. So I just, I was like, I'm gonna bite the bullet, I'm gonna pick up a box of these guys and do a little review on them. So my plan is to build them up with spears because they look so much more awesome than hand weapon shield. I don't care how they perform. I just wanna see a big, huge horde of skeletons with spears marching down the field. I think that looks pretty flippin' awesome. So today, to help me with my product review, I've got, I've got Lewis the Necromancer. Say hi, Lewis. Hey, you kids! And um, he's gonna help me do my little product review just to keep it from getting boring. Just me all by myself. So, uh, Lewis, do you want to say anything to the folks out there in YouTube land? Hello, ladies. I'm single. Alright, so that's enough out of you, old man. Let's take a look at the sprues. First of all, of course, you get 10 high-quality games workshop square bases, 20 millimeter. You don't need to see those, you know what those look like. And, um, it's not a molded base like mine, I've got a molded base. Well, we can't all have our own single, single, uh, single sculpts now, can we, Lewis? Get off my lawn! Alright, in this first brew, let's see what we've got. We've got some shields, and, uh, you'll notice that all of the iconography is very gothic and... Well, just really, really creepy looking. Like, a lot of bat wing looking skull motifs with bones, Grim Reaper. Um, and unfortunately, they're not all like facing one way, so you have to take them off and look at them around here. You've got like a casket lid. That's pretty awesome. Okay, and let's, let's start let's by looking from one side of the frame to the other. You've got skulls and. Um, torso pieces that looks like the torso pieces are one piece yeah they don't come in halves it looks like but except for this one this one looks like it comes in a half but the torso pieces are really really small and very finely detailed and so that means that they're probably going to be pretty fiddly to glue together um, we'll see when I build them up but yeah looking at the joint for the arms like they've only got these little ball sockets and down here for the legs, it looks like you're gonna need a um, plastic glue that has a fine tip applicator. So, for example, going off on a tangent for just a second, the plastic glue that I use is Model Master Liquid Cement for Plastic Models, and it's got this really fine applicator at the tip, so you can really get in there and um, and apply your plastic glue like that. The other kind that I used to use was this Zappa Gap. I don't use this so much anymore because as you can see, the tip gets all all gummy, and um, even when I clean it, for some reason, it just keeps getting all gummy. So, what are you gonna do? Um, the the helmets for the skulls look really old and gothic, and the armor is pitted and rotted. So you can do some really good effects with your painting for you vampire counts players. I love how this skull, like the jaw, is just like hanging off, like barely hanging on there. Um, but. Yeah, these skeletons are meant to look like they were raised from a battlefield where they've almost completely rotted away with age. And um, so the armor looks old compared to other, uh, to, to the current, um, you know, Warhammer old world aesthetic. And um, I want to say that if you look at the, the helmets and the skulls and the, the cloth, it almost has an Arabian feel to it. Like here it looks like almost like a turban with a pointy head crest. Almost, almost. Not not totally, but it does have a very old old-fashioned style to it. And here we see uh, oh, here are the legs. And yeah, as you can see from looking inside there, you've only got this tiny little level surface to put your torsos into and glue them in place. So that might be a problem if you don't have a fine tip applicator for your rubber cement or plastic glue. Um, because I can imagine, you know, you accidentally putting too much glue in and it gets all sticky and stuck on your fingers and then gets all over the detail and 
ruins it up with the chemical adhesion reactions and chemistry and you don't know what you're talking about so um, here's the horn oh sorry about that and um, the thing that you can see from looking into these arm sockets are that they're nicely hollowed up so that you don't need to put much in. I think a, another danger is that if you put too much glue into these sockets because you want to fill it up when you stick it onto the actual torso of the skeleton, it's all going to leak out and um, get all over the ribs and get all over the, uh, you know, just the, the torso and itself and generally not be very good. So here are the spears. I love how some of them have pennants dangling from them like this. You also get the option for doing hand weapons, in which case the swords look really corroded and rusted through with age. You can do a lot of great um, aids work with verdigris and, uh, you know, that, that kind of decaying aesthetic to it. So you've got some more old rotted shields, a lot of skull motifs, um, some large flat surfaces that you could do some freehand work if you're so inclined. And here we've got the arms for the shields. Some more skulls. It looks like there are a lot of skulls on these two frames that to the point where you can have a bunch of extra skulls that you can use to decorate your bases and whatnot. And hey, you know, Games Workshop, when have they ever let you down by not having enough skulls? So even if you only have enough of the rest of the kit to make 10 guys, you're going to have a lot of skulls left over. So here are the other spears and whatnot, and yeah, it looks like this one is just mostly limbs and weapons and skulls for the heads. Here we've got some extra torsos. But um, it looks like a fine kit. I don't know, Lewis, what do you think? I like it. I'm going to give it two thumbs up, War Bosch. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put them together and uh, Lewis is going to sit on the side and be a crotchety old man and, and nag and complain and then we'll come back and we'll wrap up the video once I've built them all up with the spears. I'll also show you what we have left over so you can see what kind of value you get for your dollar or euro or pound or whatever monetary uh, unit you use and then um, we'll wrap up the video so that you can see how much extra bits you have, what I was able to make and um, what the unit looks like when it's ready for painting. Hey, idiot, you forgot to tell them about the instructions. Oh, thanks for reminding me, Lewis. Here are the instructions for the skeleton box set. Um, I'm gonna open it up, show you what you got. Real simple 3D images of, oops, of, oh, hold on, I'm so sorry, of the models being put together. And, um, optional head swaps in in there as well. How to put together the musician and uh, the standard bearer. And then in the back here you've got all of the different ways and options that you can put together your trooper. So basically it kind of shows you examples of the different options of what you can use. See look at that, it's 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 regular skull heads, not counting the champion, standard bearer, and musician and um, you only need 10 in total, so. There you go, oh, you also get two arrows. Hey, what do you know? Two extra arrows, or like, that you could put into a shield, make it look like it was recently shot. I think I could actually use those for my ogres, though. Uh, maybe put it into the, the shield on one of the Iron Guts shoulder armor pieces. Cool, thanks, GW. I think more kits need to come with extra arrows, because that's pretty cool. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to assemble these guys as if they're holding spears and shields. I don't care how ineffective it is, I just like how they look. Very uh, Vlad the Impaler-like. Uh, Alright, here we go. Alright, so here is my unit of skeletons. It's only 10 of them, but even with only 10, I think the vertical, straight up and down spears make a really great image and I think you know if you buy the battalion box set and get like a whole I don't know 20 do you get 20 of these guys together on the field uh, getting even more of these and just having them with their spears up like this looks really good really thematic and um, once you have them painted up they'll look even better so some uh, things that I noticed before we get into what's still left on the sprue are that uh, like I thought the 
the bits are really fiddly and you're gonna really need um, some good control of your plastic glue or plastic cement or um, hopefully have one of these uh, really small fine applicators to get right in there. You don't want to put too much glue in because it's gonna spill out all over the place and uh, just end up making things really messy. Um, a great aesthetic about the vampire counts is that they all look like they were built to have a breeze blowing behind them. So you'll notice the banners, uh, or the, the pennants on the spears are all blowing forward and even even the banner here, which was a little bit difficult to put, uh, put together, is kind of looks like it's blowing forward so um, that's a really interesting thing and uh, what else I decided to model the front rank to make it look like the guys in the front are holding their shields up to block incoming blows while the guys in the back only have their shields at their side in marching formations so um, I, I also used the two arrows that came inside the pack to make it look like the guys in the front block them with their shields so hopefully it'll give them a little bit of luck um, when you know, if, if I'm rolling for any missile hits against them, but <laughs> I thought that was a cute little thing to add. I also put on this uh, chest breast piece, or this chest plate for plate armor, onto the skeleton on the standard because there's only one skeleton that comes in two halves, and you get two chest uh, front, front half um, armor pieces. So I don't know what you're supposed to do with the other half, so I just decided to throw it on the standard. I guess you could use it as an extra bit and have it decorate the base. So um, now that we're done looking at that, let's take a look at what's left on the sprue after um, after putting together the unit with spears. I see two skulls over there. Um, some more skulls, one, two, three, and these all have helmets on them and look like they can be used somewhere else. Uh, these don't, the other three do. A shield sword arm for the champion, another helmeted head, or skull actually, so you can have lots of skulls to put on your bases or decorate your other models bases with. What's, what's also interesting is you get extra spear hands I guess because for the um, musician or the standard bearer if you don't use them you get extra spears. Here of course are all the hand weapons I didn't use, extra shields I didn't use, and look at all these skulls, one, two, three, four, you get an extra torso piece that you can use as decoration. You can't make another guy because there's no extra leg pieces, but one, two, three, four skulls there, four skulls there, along with all the other skulls. And look at all these extra shields, even if I decided to... Um, I mean, let's look at the, the standard bearer has a shield, and I even put a shield on the musician here on the back, and still I'm left with all these extra shield bits that... Um, that like I'm really happy they came with the with this with the sprue with the set, but I just don't know what I'm gonna do with them. There's just like extra pieces. So thank you GW for that. Um, let's see, is there anything else? No, nope, just more hand weapon shields, some more extra spears. So I uh, I can tell that like the way I could see using these extra bits are with the zombie sprue. You've got like the the, the cork cadavers hanging off of the rope that's supposed to go into the standard and because of the amount of copying in the zombie sprue you get like two or three of those extra so you get extra torsos that you can use some of these on and I can show you right now one of the ones that I did for those of you who've seen my how to paint a zombie video or um, some of my zombie update videos you'll have seen this one before it is, here we go, this unit of zombies walking forward is dragging this loose bit of uh, um, what, what's supposed to be on the standard, this like uh, upper torso, just a torso, and I decided to put one of the extra hand weapon arms on him, and one of the um, extra, I think this is a zombie head that comes in the pack, and chain him to um, his wife at the front so that when you look at it on a square base it looks like there's four models sorry I just took this off the shelf it's got some dust and lint on it so um, this is a good way I can see of utilizing the extra bits uh, like I said you've got an extra torso in there so you can make like he's pulling himself up out of the ground you can use um, you can combine it like I said with these bits from the zombie sprue 
and um, come up with some interesting conversions and stuff. So uh, let's get back to this though. And um, so I showed you what comes in the, on the extra sprues. We showed you the unit all built up. So next I'm going to be making, hopefully, if time allows, a how to paint Warboss tutorial on how to paint up a unit of skeletons in the um, Sylvanian style, which is the um, dark purple and rich reds, as well as the new uh, Von Karstein, or not new, but the, the Von Karstein style, which is just a lot of deep reds and blacks. Um, before it became corrupt and taken over by Vlad, Sylvania's chief colors were royal gold and uh, royal purple and gold, I should say. So it would make an interesting, um, interesting homage. You could also paint like special units like the Grave Guard in the original purple of the of, of the House of Sylvania. Um, or I'm sorry, but the, the, the province of Sylvania. So I think I'm going to be doing that maybe, make these guys red. Um, yeah, so I'm just rambling now, but I really like the kit. I think the, the detail is great. I would say for a new painter or a hobbyist, like a, a, a teenager or a younger, younger hobbyist it might be hard to get all the fiddly bits to to fit exactly i noticed that the torso is going onto the legs um just because of the way the the legs are it there, there's a really small area for the join so and, and it ends up looking like all your or most of the skeletons are kind of like bent over forward um, unless you hold them in position and glue them more in an upright pose so i guess it kind of lends to the aesthetic of the shambling horde of undead, but um, you might have hard, a hard time with it if this is going to be your first army in the game, or if you're younger or inexperienced. Um, but I would definitely say definitely say it's a great kit, it's beautiful, you have a lot of extra bits. So for, um, for that, for the amount of extra pieces that you have, I give it a, definitely a thumbs up. For the detail on the models, I give it a thumbs up, and the sculpts and everything. Um, they really evoke this old gothic feel to them, so um, it's, a, it's a gorgeous army and you can do a lot of great things with them with highlighting and shading and source lighting and um, I'm looking forward to the Vampire Counts release in January. What do you think, Lewis? I like them! Now get off my lawn!